So in this first video on CGM Bet, we're going to be looking at the tables uh, module, which is the first one across the top, as you'll see in a minute. <laughs> the video could have been probably an hour in length if I'd have let it be, um, and that's just on one module, so obviously I had to trim it right down. I hope everything's in there that you need to see how this module works, um, but let me know if there's anything I've missed. Uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy it. It's going to be a bit of a ride, so make sure you're uh, seatbelted in and let's go. So from the home screen, we're going to be looking at tables which is the first module along the top menu here uh, and if we open it up we can see that we're presented with a league table so first we're going to look at the premier league from 2022 23 so we can get a full season's worth of data we'll make it a little bit bigger and then as you can see here we've got the standard end of season table here with all the matches points games all that stuff and on the right hand side you've got a list of every single fixture that was played and we've got lists of all of the scores we've got the half time score and the full time scores then you've got shots total shots shots on target uh, corners the odds for the start of the game all the key odds and the ELO coefficient so for the odds you've got win draw win and the overs unders and then you've got the ELO coefficient and you can isolate it by team as well so we can look at Bournemouth and we can look at these are all of Bournemouth's games throughout this and what we can also do is we can change the ELO difference that we want highlighted so it's set at 15 to start with we change it to 20 25 30 back down to 15 you'll see different numbers are highlighted and that's because we're asking it to only highlight games where there's a difference of 15 in the ELO coefficients or 20 or 25 or 30 and you'll see that it's highlighted um, in green and in this lovely terracotta color as well um, so it will be anything that's you know 15 or minus 15 depending on which team has got the higher coefficient. And this is common for every every team. You can go through every team's fixtures in the same way and read the same stats. So it really is uh, a great way of looking at detail. Uh, so if you look down at the, the normal table section down here, this is where we can start filtering things. Um, and if we go to the home and away stats, for example, we can click on home and we can see that now the table is only showing us um, a table based on home games only. So you can look at the performances at home of different teams. So this is Man United's home form, Man City's, uh, Bournemouth. You can see every single team in the Premier League, you can look at their home form and the table will be representative of only home games. So now we've flicked over to the away games and you can see all the different away performances, uh, Arsenal being top of the league. Uh, make sure you press all so that it goes back to normal and you can see it's reset. We've got the whole plethora of games. And now if we look at total uh, we can look over here for the first half or the second half. So now we're looking at games, if they'd finished at half-time, basically, what the table would look like. Uh, again, you can drill down into the separate teams. And what if only the second half was taken into account? This is what the table would have looked like. And it's a good way of seeing which teams perform better in different halves. You know, um, When you're looking at laying and backing, it's certainly something laying the draw or laying the favourites. It's something that is pretty useful. Um, you can look at the last 10 games. You can look at... Um, last 60 days which isn't going to be really that relevant in this Premier League uh, season because obviously we're in the middle of the summer break um, but yeah it's just it's just a way of breaking your, your data down even more so we've come back to all games now so we've got everything included and if we skip over and look at opponent type this is something that I found really useful you can say show me the table based on games between certain teams uh, so between the top six in this instance and you can see Arsenal had a really good record against the top six. Crystal Palace not so good. Um, and it's a good way of, if you've got a, a fixture that has a top team versus a bottom team, then you might want to have a look at these parameters and see what the historical data suggests. So you can do the same with the low end of the league table, so what, 17th to 20th. Um, so if the table was made up of only those games, what would it look like? And you can see Brighton are way ahead at the top. Um, it's an interesting I'm not, I haven't formulated any strategies that I might use based on this yet but I will be uh, you can see Southampton had an absolute mare um, Man City pretty good uh, Villa even better and as you can see it's going up and up so sort of you could argue that there are flat track bullies maybe that are better against the that accumulate most of their points against the lower teams I don't know uh, you can also which this isn't something that I've really found a useful massively, but you can look at fixtures between certain months. So if you look at January to February, as we have in this instance, there's not many games in January to February. 
Um, but it's just an example of matches played between those months and it will only show you those ones. So maybe if we broaden it out a little bit and sort of look towards the end of the season, that might be a little bit more useful. So sort of March to June. And again, you can see matches played three out of three for Man City. Villa had a great end to the season. So did Brentford. Wolves, not so good. So you can see teams that were perhaps in form towards the end of the season who were struggling. Um, and it's just, you know, like I say, you've got to then use this to build a hypothesis. But there's so many things you can do. with it. You can even look at days of the week. So you could say, show me only midweek fixtures. Um, so we're saying Monday to Friday. Um, and you can see actually here, there's only a few games, and this is interesting because it, what the reason is I haven't reset one of the um, one of the columns from earlier, and you'll see that if you look at the the stats, it's still got um, 17 to 20, so between places 17 and 20. So what it's doing is because it's so detailed, it's only showing me games on a Monday to Friday in teams between 17th and 20th. So it's a real niche sort of set of data. So if I put it back to one to 40. Right, um, position obviously we only need 20 you'll see that now it's got a lot more so that was a sort of mistake on my part actually like I hadn't actually uh, reset it but it just shows you how powerful it is that it will filter and filter and filter until you ask it to stop um, so yeah that was a midweek games and then we reset it to make sure that we're back to normal and as you can see we've got the full complement of games uh, and everything is back to normal so if we skip over here there's more you can now uh, look at teams uh, the table based on teams and when goals were scored so between the 0 and the 10th minute this is what the the table looks like Man City um, how many goals did they scored I can't read it properly because I'm like, uh, 7 <laughs> sorry my screen's small when I'm recording this Nottingham Forest had a terrible record in the first 10 minutes uh, it might be more telling towards the end of the game really to use so what if we use 71 to 75 uh, there you can see Brentford are really strong um, towards the end of games and if if the table was based on those minutes Brentford would have been winning obviously I know that tables are never going to be based on this and we don't take it as sort of as golden that this is going to be useful necessarily on its own but then you can drill down into home uh, matches with goals between those times so it'll only show you the home ones the table based on home games it's just so, there's just so much and this is just one module remember this is just the tables module um this is towards the end of the game so now you can say what what are teams like at the business end of the matches and everton actually did really well um i think we're on away now aren't we away matches everton performed well towards the end of away matches that's an interesting stat and you could say you could build a strategy based on that if Everton were losing going into the last 10 minutes of a game. Um, down here, we've got some different sort of brackets, you know, still time brackets, but slightly different um, sized brackets. So this one's 76 to 90, I think it is. Uh, so this really is sort of you lay the draw strategy sort of time frame or to lay the favourites or whatever it is you want to be looking to do. Is it a wise choice based on the history of these teams? You can look and you can say, well, Brentford are going to get goals at the end. Uh, Bournemouth probably aren't. If Bournemouth are winning going into the end of the match, are you going to back them to keep that lead or are you going to oppose them? Um, you can look at stats table. So this is another tab all within this, still within this table section uh, where you can drill down by shots, shots on target, um, uh, corners and different things and it all, it all, populate a table based on that uh, so you can see here let's have a look at shots on target and you can see that Brighton had the most shots on target um, which is interesting because their their build-up play tended to be quite elaborate at times and you wouldn't have thought they might have might have not got as many shots off uh, corners which is something that I enjoy doing corner betting you can see that Newcastle are good for corners um, with over seven averaging over seven four each match and again you can drill down and do home and away for this as well so you could really get granular with it um ball possession is that as useful i don't know um own goals probably even less useful but uh, having said that i should it, it might be less useful but there are systems and systems upon systems that you can build here uh, and if you want to include these in those systems you can and that's what this gives you the flexibility the opportunity to 
build granular systems that nobody else is building. Uh, so we could the goals the goals one is a lot more interesting. So over 0.5 goals, if the table based on over 0.5 goals. See, Man City had over 0.5 goals in every single, so they didn't have a nil nil all season. Um, Newcastle are actually bottom of that table. It's still over 80%. Uh, and you can see it also has the average. So basically, it's telling you that not over 90% of the time there's going to be a goal in Premier League games. If you look at over 2.5, which I know many of you will enjoy getting involved in, it's a different story, obviously, in much lower percentages. Wolves are no good for over 2.5. Arsenal are the best if you are looking at that. And then if you look at the average, it's just over 50%. So what you need to do is then make sure you're getting odds that represent over 50%. So we're looking at over evens. So we want odds of 2.3 and 4 upwards if you're going to get involved in over 2.5 goals market. You can also, which is quite interesting, look at correct scores. So you can say, show me all the matches that finished 1-1. One, one. Uh, and it will sort the table based on how many times each team finished with a 1-1 result. You can drill into it and it will show you those games. So you can see Fulham only had one, whereas Brentford had quite a few. And you can change that to whatever scoreline you want. Uh, and you can split it up by um, half-time and full-time scores as well. Um, it's just another layer, really, of complexity, which you can't get in other stats modules that I can find. So you can do it by half-time, full-time. You can also filter the games by how many goals difference there were in the scoreline at the end. So if we put plus one here uh, and hit difference, you'll see that Man United actually 13 times finished with winning the game by one goal, which is 34%. Um, and you can compare that to the rest of the league, which I think is you know pretty interesting when you're looking at correct scores or you're looking at Asian handicaps, then you can have a look and change that to plus two or minus one, minus two. Um, and I think, yeah, it's another another really handy feature. And then on top of that, you can drill down and have a look at the particular games that did finish um, with a plus one difference. So you could see the Man United games, you could see the Leicester games there, only had two where they won by one goal. Uh, and then if you want to go through and change to anything else, you can say, why don't we say minus two. So show us all the games where any team lost by two goals exactly. Uh, and you can see Villa, there's quite a number of Villa games where they lost by two goals sad times uh, in that nice terracotta colour all of them because they're all losses so that's the colour for losses uh, again Crystal Palace there's three games where they lost by exactly two goals and we can see those and we can see the final scores so yeah I think that's that's pretty interesting so next up we'll skip across to the group section and this is where we can group teams and look at how different groups fare against each other so you could say how do the top six fare against the bottom six how do how does one single team perform against the top six? Uh, so if we create a group, no, add them to group one. I'm calling it top six. I'm aware that, I'm just doing it quickly. I'm aware that Brighton should be in there, not Chelsea. But look, I've done it now. This isn't commentary on how good anyone is. It's just a way of showing you. So we've got that group there. And then we can see it's put them in a group. And at the top, uh, on the left-hand side, we can look at the table. So it's showing how each team fared against those six teams. You can see Man City obviously did well. Um, Chelsea, not so well, because they probably shouldn't be in there. And then, so if you put Everton in as Group 2 and just purely put them, do group versus group, it will show you how all those top six teams fared against Everton, and more importantly, probably how Everton fared against those top six. And if you look, you can see all of the results there. Um, they only won one game, drew three, lost six, which isn't kind of terrible, to be fair. But it will show you all of the stats for that as well, and you can drill into it and look at each game by game. Next up, we're going to look at the form chart, and you need current season's data for that. So we're going to go to Argentina, Primera Division, and look at the current season's data for 22-23, so that we can have a look at the form. So we've done that, and now you'll see this wonderful line chart, and it shows you the form of teams when you press on it. So you press on this team, you can see that's their form. Uh, and if you've got a, a fixture, you press on both teams. The first one will be the home team, second one will be the away team. And it shows you their form line. So with this one, you can see it's uh, quite drastically different. You can also do the best trend. So these are the teams with the best form going up at the end, as you can see with the lines. Um, so these are teams in good form. And conversely, you can look at the worst trends, which will show you teams whose form goes down. Uh, so they're in the worst form at the moment, and you can see the line tails off towards the end for comparison. So thanks for watching. I hope you found that interesting. I know there's a lot of data uh, presented and a lot to take in. If there's anything you need further clarification, just drop a comment in the uh, comments below and let me know. And also drop a comment on any 
um, strategies that you'd like me to build based on this uh, data that you've seen today, any ideas that you've got. And as a community, we can come around and we can build a load of strategies. Uh, I can share them with you on here. We can track the results uh, and we can see how powerful this data really is. Uh, so yeah, please like and subscribe. It does me a big favour and I'll see you again soon.